What's the best frame rate? 24, 30, 60? Frame rates can be confusing. You not only have to decide what to record your footage in, but what to set your timeline in, what to upload in, and how about slow motion? Today we're gonna to look at many of the most common frame rates, side by side, from 24 frames per second, all the way up to 1,000 frames per second using the Kronos 2.1. On top of all that, all the comparisons will be in three separate videos. This 24 frames per second video you're watching right now, one in 30 frames per second, and another in 60 frames per second, both of which I've linked. So you can see how your uploaded video's frame rate not only affects the real-time motion you see, but the slow motion as well. It's gonna get crazy, clips being slowed down, frame rates within frame rates, videos within videos. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Let's get started. First off, before we get into this, there is no mythical best frame rate. Hopefully after watching this, you could decide what the best frame rate or frame rates are for you. There are, however, three things to consider when it comes to frame rates. Before you shoot anything, the first thing you wanna do is select a master frame rate. This is the frame rate you will set your timeline to in your editing software, export your video, and upload it to wherever it's going. Ultimately, every video is one frame rate. So whatever those settings are, everything will become that frame rate. The second thing to consider is what frame rate or frame rates to record your footage. Unless you want slow or fast motion, a good rule of thumb is to match the frame rate of your footage and your timeline. And the third thing you want to consider when editing is what speed to play your footage. If the footage and timeline are the same frame rate, you're set. Otherwise, you have two options. So let's say our timeline was 24 frames per second and our footage was 30. When you drop that 30 frames per second clip into a 24 frames per second timeline, most editing software will try and keep the clip the same length. To accomplish this, the software in this scenario will have to remove frames to make 30 fit in a 24, specifically one out of every five frames. However, this does make the video look choppy and kind of weird, which you'll see in a minute. So why would you ever want to do something like this? Well, let's say when you were recording, you didn't know if you wanted slow motion or not, and then you got back to editing and you decided against it. Speaking of slow motion, instead of keeping the clip the same length and removing frames, we can do the opposite. Keep all the frames and lengthen the clip. In this case, again, we have a 30 frames per second clip dropped into our 24 frames per second timeline. To keep all the frames and lengthen the clip, we divide 24 by 30 times 100% equals 80%. So all we do in Premiere is right click on the clip, go to speed duration, and change the speed to 80%. You can see the clip becomes longer. Now, instead of it appearing as real time, it appears as slow motion. How slow or fast depends not only on the frame rate of the footage, but the frame rate of the timeline as well. This is the Kronos 2.1. It shoots 1,000 frames per second in full HD. Pretty cool. 1,000 frames per second is a lot of frames in a little amount of time, meaning you can stretch out that footage for some pretty intense slow motion. Let's say, for instance, you take a 1,000 frames per second clip and drop it into a 24 frames per second timeline. That will play at 2.4% or be 41.67 times slower than real time. Now take that same clip into a 60 frames per second timeline and it will play at 6% and only be slowed down 16.67 times relative to real time. So the frame rate of your timeline makes a big difference, especially when it comes to slow motion. The video you are watching right now was recorded in 23.976. It was edited in 23.976. It was uploaded to YouTube in 23.976. For our purposes here, consider this 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second is considered cinematic, which I don't like that term, but it is historically the most common frame rate for cinema and what a lot of us grew up on watching movies. If you like the look of this, it might be for you. What we're gonna do now is take many of the common frame rates, 24, 30, 60, and 120, and drop them all into this 24 frames per second video, keeping the clips the same length at first and comparing them side by side. This means the computer's gonna have to go in and remove frames to keep them appearing as real time. Then we'll look at slow motion by instead lengthening the clips using 30, 60, 120, and two additional frame rates, 240 and 1000. I'm gonna repeat all of this in the 30 frames per second video and the 60 frames per second video that I've linked up here. All these clips were recorded with the Sony a7S III in S-Log3. We're gonna look at walking, jogging, and sprinting so you can see three different speeds of action and how different frame rates might be better for different situations. And here we go. So this footage you're seeing now was recorded in 29.97 frames per second or 30 frames per second and was put in this 24 frames per second video. It might look a little choppy because of that, but you should also notice less motion blur. This is probably something you don't wanna do. Now you're looking at 59.94 frames per second or 60 frames per second. This is currently the highest frame rate you can upload a video to YouTube. 
Because we're still in this 24 frames per second video, now one out of every 1.67 frames is being removed to keep it real time. I see this look a lot on YouTube, and I think it's because it's a common frame rate for slow motion, so some people just record everything in 60 frames per second. This is 119.88 frames per second, or 120 frames per second. This is usually reserved for slow motion, unless you're Ang Lee. Also to note here, you need a lot of light for this. This thing's really bright. Very little motion blur here, and one out of every 1.25 frames have been removed. Now let's talk slow motion. We're gonna look at these frame rates again, 30, 60, 120, and add two more, 240 and 1000 frames per second using the Kronos 2.1. This time, instead of playing them in real time, we're gonna be stretching out the clips to play them in slow motion. For instance, the 120 frames per second will be slowed down five times to match the 24 frames per second video you're watching right now. One more note on slow motion. Let's say you don't have a high speed camera that can shoot high frame rates, but you still want really slow motion. What do you do? Well, now you have the opposite problem. When you stretch the clip out, you actually have frames missing and you have gaps. That will cause choppiness. We're gonna quickly take a look at that using the Twixter plugin to try and smooth some of that choppiness out. Okay, now that you've seen everything in the 24 frames per second video, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you ready to see everything in the 30 frames per second video? Or the 60? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.